Hey guys, it's John here, and this is a really quick getting started video for Plan Cook Eat. Uh, so let's get started. This here is the main screen that you'll see when you start up Plan Cook Eat. It's got some information uh, that I add from time to time here at the beginning, uh, including this video, also a bunch of features which I would like to add soon. The whole program is born out of necessity for me, so I'll be developing it to use in my own life, uh, and all those updates will trickle out to you guys, which you'll hopefully find helpful. Um, just one quick note, the bug reports and feature requests, if you find anything that is a little weird in the program or that doesn't work or you encounter errors or if you have like a really awesome idea for a feature that you would like added, please shoot me an email at jcram at gmail.com. Uh, I'll be releasing updates as frequently as I can and if I can work your suggestion into it then all the better uh, and then everyone else can benefit. So the news button on the left hand sidebar here brings up this screen. You can also click on check for updates and this will bring up a little dialogue which will make sure that you've got the latest version of Plan Cook Eat. If it finds a, a newer version it will prompt you to download an installer file for that which you can then run and it will update whatever version of Plan Cook Eat you have. Okay let's get started on the ingredients and meal side of things. So to begin with you need to build up your ingredients database. As you can see here we already have a bunch of ingredients um, in here. And the way we create this database is more or less using sources like Google. So if you wanted to find the calories in shrimp, you could type in shrimp calories and it gives you this really awesome um, breakdown of the fats, carbohydrates, proteins, and calories, uh, for example. And you can see the quantity of, um, for this nutritional information is 100 grams. So if we then wanted to add that into our program here, we could say shrimp its quantity is 100 grams and we can then add in all the the fat information I think it was 0 0.3 and add all that information here for for each of these ingredients um, the main thing to note here is fat carbs protein and calories are always measured in grams and the quantity here is one of the tricky parts of the program at the moment because it is in a very raw state the quantity expects two things it expects a number to begin with and this number can be a fraction like um, 1 divided by 2, and it will then convert that to decimal format. Uh, or you could put in 3, whatever you would like. It then also expects a unit. That unit, there's three different types. One is X, and that is uh, a whole quantity unit. So if you wanted to have three shrimps, uh, or three shrimps, sorry, or like one banana, then you use three and then the letter X. And that letter X denotes that ingredient as a whole quantity. The other types of quantities you can have are either volume or mass based. So an example of a volume would be one teaspoon or one tablespoon uh, going up to, you could have one cup. Unfortunately, because of the way the quantity system works at the moment, you will need to enter that in as cup with an S in um, brackets. Uh, and that's something that will hopefully be fixed in a, in a future update, so you can just enter it in as one cup, or etc. But if you start seeing errors like NAN or not a number appearing in some calculations, just double check that your ingredients uh, and your meal components have correct, uh, correctly spelled quantities in here. If you wanted to put in a volume, sorry, a mass-based quantity, then you've got things like 100 grams, kilograms, milligrams. Um, you also have ounces uh, and pounds, um, which I think is LB, it could be LBS. If you're ever not sure about the quantities, there is a units file which you can open up, which looks a bit scary. Um, some of you may be familiar with JSON, but as you can see here, these are all the units. So where it says suffix, we've got grams, ounces, pounds. The pound is just LB milliliters. So if you're not sure, you can open up this file, units.json, and it will give you a list of all the different units that you can use. Or just use the ingredients that are currently in there, and they give a fairly good example of what's possible. Great, okay, so that's the example of that. So say we wanted 100 grams of shrimp. Uh, once you've input the ingredients, we can then go to meals. In the meals, you'll see the meals that are already in the database on the left-hand side here, and you can click on any one of those. If you would like to change its name, just double click and it will then give you a chance to edit the meal name. Otherwise, you'll see the totals or the nutritional totals for that meal displayed in this uh, box here. In this middle table, you'll find all the ingredients that are part of that meal. So if we were to create a new meal, let's, let's call this a shrimp snack, then um, as you can see, we have no ingredients. Um, we could then search for shrimp 
and then if we double click shrimp or click on the add ingredient button it will add the default quantity to our recipe um, now you can see that the meal totals have updated to show that 100 grams of uh, shrimp is going to give us 0.3 and if we click on that it's, it's going to show us the same thing. If we wanted to change this to 200 grams of shrimp in the snack you'll then see that the meal total and the selected component have actually updated. Um, we can now add something else, maple syrup, it's a very strange shrimp snack um, and now you'll see that we have uh, a meal total which is comprised of both of these things. Awesome, so now that you know how to create ingredients and create meals, we can now go to the weekly plan, which is the crux of the whole program. At the very top, you'll see the meal plan. At the moment, there's only four meal slots per day, so breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. In the future, uh, I would like to add uh, the ability to customize the meal times per day, so if you only wanted three meals per day, or say you wanted six meals per day, you can add a custom number of um, meal slots here. Uh, but at the moment, it's, it's just the four that we're working with. There are two different ways to add a meal to the meal plan. You can either select the meal time you want. So say for Sunday, we wanted to have um, sweet potato hash and eggs instead of bacon and eggs. We could just select that meal time, double click on sweet potato, and it will update that meal uh, in the plan there. Alternatively, say we wanted to have paleo tacos multiple nights this week. We could go click on paleo tacos and then double click on the slots that we would like to put that meal into. Uh, and then as you do that, you'll see the totals for each day update with the fat, carbs, protein, and calories, which give you an indication of generally um, uh, you know, what, what you're consuming on a daily basis. You can then update the information here with your personal uh, details, so your gender, age, height, weight, etc., and the level of exercise you perform each week, which will then calculate your BMI or your basal metabolic rate, or your base metabolic rate. And this is how many calories you burn per day just by existing. Um, the burn calories per day number underneath it is this uh, BMR number modified according to the level of exercise that you conduct. So as you can see here with three to five times, which is medium or moderate level of exercise per week, we'll burn 2,511 calories per day. The total calories per week is each day um, Oh, sorry, add it up for each day the difference between the calories that you're consuming and the calories that you're burning. So we can see this week we're burning 4,677 calories with an average of 668 calories per day that we're burning. This um, amount of calories being burnt per day will give us an estimated 0.61 kilogram uh, lost for this week. I apologize to any Americans or people who don't use the metric system. Uh, in the future, I'd like to add an update so you can display this in whatever unit you would like, but for now it's kilograms. Great. Okay, so you've added, you've created your meal plan. You've you've got all your information here. You can now generate a shopping list. So if we create this, we could save this to a file, and this file is going to look something like this. So it's just a text file um, with a summary of all the different ingredients that you need um, to conduct that meal plan. Now keep in mind this is fairly raw and at the alpha stages of the program so you may get a few weird things um, such as, uh, what have we got here, 3.4 onions. Yeah, so what you need to do is go over this list and then round up the quantities to a normal um, amount. So purchase four onions if you need 3.4 for example. Um, but on the whole it's, it's quite a good um, guide for what you need to purchase when you're, um, when you're going shopping. Cool, so that's pretty much it for this uh, program. If you do want to get deeper into things, or say for example you want to share your plans or your ingredients with your friends, uh, you can load and save the database files here. If, you, if you're only using the program for yourself, you don't need to worry about that because all the information will automatically save um, for you when you exit the program. Um, but if you are an advanced user, you can save an ingredients file and maybe email it to a friend and they can load that ingredients file in to make their own meals. At the moment, meals and plans do not embed ingredients inside them. So if you want to share your meals with someone else, you need to make sure they have the same ingredients that you use in that meal on their system. Uh, okay, so that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video gave you a, a good idea of, of how to begin using Plan Cook Eat. Um, I found it really useful in planning my meals and going shopping on a weekly basis for me. Um, and once again, if you have any ideas or if you find any bugs, please contact me at jcram at gmail.com and I would be happy to work those into a future update. 
If you find the program is really useful and you would like to contribute, there is a PayPal donate button at the top right. Um, don't feel obliged to do so. It's simply there for people who are finding the tool very useful and would like to support development of this program. On a final note, you'll see a units button which is greyed out here on the left hand side. Um, don't worry about that. That will never be activated in this current version. In the future, you'll be able to create your own custom units of quantity with conversion rates. Um, so that's what that's in there for. But anyway, that's all from me. Uh, good luck with Plan Cook Eat. Um, I hope you have a great time eating healthy and not spending a great deal of time to do so. And I look forward to hearing from you soon. Cheers. Bye-bye.